You are a planeswalker. Planeswalkers draw mana from lands they visited and use that energy to summon creatures to defeat their rivals. In the magic card game, you'll use your creatures to attack your opponent or to block an attack. Well, that's a very simplified version of uh, an introduction. Welcome to Magic 2015, a game I've never played yet, and obviously the direct sequel to Welcome Magic to 2014. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. Thank you for defeating my own introduction. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20 to 0. Or removing every card in their library, or certain enchantments, There's, it gets kind of complicated. use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. Which is interesting, because cards that make you lose c cards from your library directly into your graveyard are generally ones that seem to be, you know, destroying your mind. Each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing, called a mulligan. To take as you can see, magic cards have many... Okay. For the first so the controls are basically the same as 2014, I think. Specialty I hope. Large, powerful creatures. To cast spells or summon creatures, it's kind of too bad I understand how the uh, tutorial works. It's too much. It's really... simple. <laughs> At least for the first few turns. Every magic game is generally the same. Uh, unless you're playing Legacy. Or Vintage. Now, I've never played those ones, but basically one turn kills are kind of what the decks are built around. And, in my opinion, not only is it not fun, but it's it's designed around being unfair every spell has a mana cost. it's hard to describe but let's just say destroying every card in your own deck and then like casting a card called Char goblin char belcher you know weird stuff like that when a player gains control of a creature okay I understand let's just get through the tutorial first because Hannibal explained to me that in magic 2015 you can't avoid the tutorials exactly not only that, but you have to play through the Innistrad block to unlock the multiplayer. Because apparently, you need to build your own deck before you can play with it. Which makes sense. But it wasn't this way in the previous version, so it's an interesting thing. Also, this is the silliest tutorial ever. A 1-1 one -one would never attack with me having a 3-3 three -three untapped with no reason, unless he's got a spell in his hand. Okay, so is this still just click and uh, drag, or what? Oh, just double click this time. Sure, that's fine. And click the block button. And continue. He's probably got a shock in his hand. That's the only reason why they showed me this. Now oh, that was uh, silly. By the way, I like the design of this whole uh, game so far. It's all kind of based on the whole Garuk Planeswalker, who's the green guy, has been corrupted by Liliana, who's the black girl. <laughs> that sounds wrong. But, uh, yeah, and basically he's out to kill all the other Planeswalkers is sort of the idea here. Which is cool, because... There was a different version of Garuk, which was a flip card, so I'm not sure if there's another version of him in Magic 2415. Sorry. But it's kind of a whole interesting thing that it's all based around this sort of concept that never really went anywhere. to know that in magic you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent you that's true i'm glad they got rid of banding if anybody watching this understands magic the gathering you'll know that things like there, there's been different mechanics that just didn't exactly work for example 
lining up all your blockers so that they are essentially one creature and you get to decide as the defending player which ones take damage as opposed to the way it is now try something a little different instead of playing your land and casting a now attack with both of your creatures it looks like crimson mage has decided not to block with his blood rock cyclops so he'll take seven damn After combat, go ahead. You'll be in great shape to win if you cast. I'm guessing you can't lose the tutorial game because that would be silly. Crimson Mage will play a land and attack. Right now, I'm just kind of brute forcing my way through this, guys. But at least it does show the kind of um, you know mentality this game's going for, which is fine. By the way, I I chose to. Uh, Let's see, just double click, right? Yeah, okay. I told at the beginning of the game that I've played a lot of magic, which put it on the highest difficulty setting. Which hopefully won't make it unbeatable, because I don't know. All you need to do now I'm used to things that, uh, you know, Hannibal is called Nintendo difficulty. Which is where, uh, out of nowhere you might be winning, and then all of a sudden the game will just throw everything at you, and you, you'll never win. Things like Mario Kart, Mario Superstar Baseball, other things like that. Alright, well, let's just move on, because I don't feel like splitting this into different videos. Because that's kind of boring. This is just a tutorial. The second quest. Sorceries. Okay, good. Interesting that they have to tell you about interacting with the graveyard. I mean... Innistrad was kind of like that to a degree, so I guess they need to throw that in there. Which really makes it a little more complicated. Quest, you'll be using a black deck. Black specialty is removing your opponent's and paying life to do everything that every other color can do. As you can see, a lot of dueling has gone on so far. We're both at four. Creatures on the battlefield, it'll take a miracle to survive the next few turns. It's Azure. Wow, okay, so the tactic this time has put me in a losing position with absolutely no cards in my hand. Well, that's an interesting tactic. What does Man of War even do? Well, let's have a look. Oh, no big deal. Assassinate is a card that can destroy a creature of your choice as long as it's tapped. Since you're at two oh, I have to target it. Okay, that's fine. Mage's creature before it... Obviously, that's the only play we can make. As your mage will ca now, your opponent has a creature that has a special ability. Zoom in on the card to find out what makes Wind Drake difficult to block. Are you trying to tell me because flying is a special ability? It's okay. Generally a thing that lots of creatures in blue have. Also, we're dead. Without another assassinate card, you have no way to destroy oh, I see. Mage's Wind Drake. I see we're not dead because boom. Now, hopefully he won't be an idiot and run right into my 2-3. I'm at 2 life. He just has to wait till my other creature's gone. Go. what is that? Now you're in serious trouble. That Goliath Sphinx can kill you with one hit. I'm glad the tutorial hasn't broken the rules yet, because, well, goodness knows that that thing doesn't have haste. Here's an interesting decision. Do you attack with your vampire Nighthawk? If you do, you won't have any untapped creatures to block the Goliath Sphinx with. No, I will be dead. I will be dead. I would not attack into that. An 8-7 flyer? No. 
And he should have attacked with both, probably. Vampire Nighthawk is one of my ma most hated cards. I mean, it's just too good for three mana, and if you played against any of the uh, standard zombie, no, standard vampire builds, it was absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Terrible with how good it was. And that's how they turn it around right away. Well, I suppose that's pretty good for showing how spells can be better than creatures, which is an interesting concept, just because usually in magic, hey, creatures stay around longer, therefore they've got more potential to deal damage. That's why generally the green deck against the red deck is a very hard fight for the red deck to win, unless, well, they have some sort of board wiping spell. That's just a generalized thing, though. Let's move on! We'll make this a big video, because anybody watching this wouldn't want it split up. Augmentation. Uh, okay, there's still, like, five more, I guess. Or two more. Let's try not to take this too long. I do appreciate tutorials, but I told this I did a lot of magic, so... It's kind of funny that even though I've already explained to the game that it's... You know, me that's uh, more experienced. I suppose this is just showing me the game abilities, because even if I know magic, I don't necessarily know how to play in this format. Yeah, Honor the Pure is a great card. Yep. Not much to say here. It's a bit of an obvious play. Minotaur Abomination. <laughs> a 4-6 creature. He's at 6 life. What is the tutorial going to tell me to do? It appears that Onyx Mage has put a stop to your advancing army. If you Nothing. Okay, that's fair. Again, that's an interesting thing. Showing the player that it's a good idea not to always put the pressure on. Now you have a chance to take care of this Minotaur problem. Creatures have the ability to block... Oh! And for the first time, gang blocking as a necessary step. Because, of course, he can't kill both of them. That's good. But that nightmare is a serious problem. You've drawn a special kind of enchantment, an aura. While enchantments affect Okay, that's a nice little play from the white deck here. Immediately stopping a threat. Now that the nightmare has been pacified, it's time to renew Cuz it's not so much playing magic in the tutorials, it's me seeing what this deck is trying to teach me. Oh. And again, just how the opponent will have enchantments that can do exactly the same thing. <laughs> Onyx Mage has cast an aura on your glory. I bet every aspect of this tutorial is going to have something from every colored deck. Oh, it's forcing me to zoom in on it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, first strike is a good ability. And of course, skip attack, because there's no reason to just lose my 1-1. One, one. For no reason. Actually, I need to keep the Glory Seeker. No, I don't need to. I could stab him for one if I needed to, but I'm not going to. Just because he has to block or he dies. 
but maybe they'll pull something out of nowhere. I don't know. Unless he gets another blocker, I'm sure this tutorial will have him dead anyway in a turn. Yeah. And that's fine. Could have randomly lost my 1-1 at any point there, but... Aw, oh, he didn't even get to stab. Nice. Okay, and finally... Well, I don't think this is a final step, though. Gah, counter spells in the tutorial? I suppose it's a good card to learn. Hell of annoying, though. Just because it's it's an it's one of the more difficult things of magic to explain. Yep. Going with some four four flying air elementals or five. That's fine. And I'm at four. Jade Mage cast an instant. Inst yep, instants can be played any time, which means I need to block, and it sucks. Double click, and there we go. I wonder if it's possible to lose a tutorial fight. I really hope not. That would suck, you just have to replay it again, which is interesting. So now Jade Mage has cast another giant growth, but instead of letting it make her probably click stop the timer. Now you've cast a spell. I'm not actually sure if that's necessary or not, but it used to be, and I'll assume it is because I'd rather not lose the opportunity to cancel here, or I'd lose the game straight up. Still going to attack. When they're at 10 life. Fair enough. Uh. You've drawn Archaeomancer, a creature with a triggered ability. Yeah, a fairly annoying one. This is always a very interesting position to be in as the blue deck where they know you have a counter spell in your hand. Do they play what they want to play or not? Knowing that it could get countered is always Normally, a massive issue. All the damage from the attacking creature. But if a creature with trample is blocked, it will deal enough. Oh, I see what they're showing me here. I won't quite be dead, but uh damage is going to carry over. Interesting thing. Now I tap 7 to play the worm. Yeah, okay, you need to play this. Okay, so stopping the timer is in fact important. Cool. Divination, because we have nothing. Play Aether Dev, then targets. What? And this will make a stall for time. Oh, I see what they're doing. This is an interesting tactic, just to show that blue instants can be total jerk faces. A primordial hydra for seven. It's not letting me play the land first, that's funny. I don't know what the difference would make. Now I've got a Primordial Hydra. Trust me, having this guy is just the biggest jerk move ever. Because uh, it's about to become 14-14 Trample, and there's nothing you can do about it. 
And just like this in the tutorial, we knew one turn. That's how that happens. Because now, even though we're blue, we learn that trample goes both ways. <laughs> Cute. And he takes 12. Right to the face. Instants are powerful ways to surprise your opponents or thwart their plans. Practice using the stack. So, equipment is the next thing they're going to show us. That's fair. I hope we get to go through Mirrodin because, oh gosh, poison counters is difficult, but I sure do love that it's a whole new way to play. I wonder if there's going to be a separate tutorial explaining that. Oh, I don't think Magic 2014 included uh, Mirrodin Besieged. For your final quest, you'll be using a red deck. Okay. He's at three. Just draw me a Lava Axe. Game over. I'm not sure why they feel the need to put me in a losing position every single time, though. Except that it's quicker. Oh, that's the thing that lets you gain life. Prodigal Pyromancer, a creature... Now, he unfortunately like doesn't have haste. A... And funny enough, he's more like, I believe, a shifted time-shifted card. The very first one was Timmy. He was blue, exactly the same, except blue. And he was before him, I believe. Alabaster Mage has cast an equipment. It usually improves. I can't activate that right now, can I? No. Interesting, it didn't even give me the option to block, which is what I was thinking. Was that blocking be a bad idea? I'd just straight up be dead. Activate ability. Creatures. I also like that it's not giving me the option, although technically you would have it, of using the Prodigal Pyromancer to kill itself. Which, in fact, is absolutely no fun. <laughs> uh, this is probably an option that will come up later. For no reason. Many artifact cards what, is he indestructible? No. Well, you just need to pay mana and make it not have defender. I wonder if they're going to give me some sort of broken enchant equipment. It has an That'll allow the Pyromancer to untap every time it deals damage. There's a few things like that. They're from Lorwyn. Now please let me just destroy the creature. Okay. Interesting, though, that it doesn't have the whole shooting a fireball effect like it had in the last game. Seems to be less, uh... I suppose, uh, visual effects, which isn't so bad. I mean, they were fun last time, but I'm not feeling like it's lacking by not having those, interestingly enough. Get a dragon hatchling. Oh, it's going to teach me, wait a minute. You can only activate that. No, okay, this is wrong. I thought it was a different card altogether. Uh, ahem, please let me activate Pyromancer every turn. I don't see why not. There we go. And as far as I know, that guy doesn't have Trample. Block, please. Fantastic. And it's really showing me that equipment is really important because it's just going to keep equipping and equipping and equipping. Like, it would let me just ping him five times, we'd be gone. Three damage target creature player. See, if I was able to ping him before, 
fine. For, you know, he'd be dead right now. He'd be at four. I'd do this to target creature or player. And then I'd have already pinged him twice. Efficiency in magic is always using your resources when you've got them available, because you never know when they're just going to draw something that'll change the game state drastically. I'm not saying everybody plays with a time twister, but <laughs> forgetting to play a land, not pinging somebody every time you have a chance, not attacking with the 1-1 with haste, these things can just cost you a game. I'm serious. Very uh, ridiculous. And there's, you know, I can activate this any time. It's interesting that they're all like, do it now! Because I didn't do it before, and I could have just seared, speared him in the face. Not that that's a bad thing. Because this is a tutorial, so I, I just kind of have to flow with it. <laughs> Anybody playing Magic 2015 is going to have to deal with this too. So, uh, you know, at least I'm playing it so you don't have to. It's not so bad, really. It's just I know it all already. It's too bad you're forced to do it. Okay, this is interesting. Choose your color. White, blue, black, red, green. The only thing I know is that Hannibal said don't go with green, black at the start and you lose. I'm going to go with black and red if I can. Because personally, I've all... My first deck ever was red-black. Black spell... Yeah, no. Wield the fires of madness with red stealing spells and use those creatures as fuel. That's interesting. Blue-black, and of course, white-black. That seems like a Ravnica deck. We're going with chaos and slaughter! <laughs> oh, I'll see you next time. This is gonna be good. Oh! Okay, one last one, which is apparently against... A giant? Cyclops? Something like that? A horde of monsters threatens to overrun a local village. Armed with the new spells, it's time to something, something. I'm playing red and black, okay? I'm, like, you know, horrible mind destruction or whatever. So, is this an actual game? Shadow Cloak Vampires. Five, five minutes for a 4-3. Interesting. I hope I draw something else. I hope they don't allow me to die in the first turn. I have no early spells. Whenever another red creature... You, mm -hmm. I can see this is going to be an issue right off the bat. Now we're going to see where the AI's difficulty really lies. Okay. Also, we're going to see what the red-black flavor is here, because... I don't know what these decks are. Are these specifically actual starter decks, or are they just built into the game? Because if they're actual ones you can have in real life, that's actually fairly interesting. At uh, how familiar you can be. Oh, good. Turn two spell. I wonder if this is actually scripted. There's only one way to know, and that is to play it twice. Oh, wait. Pitchburn Devils cost five. Uh. Okay. And now is where it's getting really bad, unless there's a Pyroclasm in this deck. Which, judging by... the fact everything so far in my hand has more than two health, would be a very nice card to have. Especially since there's absolutely nothing I can do right now. What we got here? There's no reason to cast Act of Treason. We're just gonna take one, two, three, four, five on my next turn. It's interesting they pitch you against something so aggressive. I may have to play this twice just to make sure that there's, you know, it's not a scripted hand. Come on, give me something playable for four. I suppose you'll do. I 
A lifelink will keep me slightly alive, I guess. Not impressed at the level of just... Straight up murder, never mind. Well. Yep, five damage. Okay, so now what? I'm just dead? That's not a very good tutorial. I thought I'd keep the active treason in my hand because, um... Clearly there's something in this deck about etc. Okay. So, what do I do now that I can play my other card? It's a 4-3. Okay, ah. Uh, use the mana tapping button to cycle through ma- Okay. What's the mana tapping button? Oh, I see. Suppose I could play Krenko's Command Attack for two for no reason. But that would give me two one ones. You know what? Whatever. I'm not very impressed at what this red black deck has so far. Clearly that's supposed to be a clever combat trick. It's only a sorcery though, so it's not particularly useful. What's the idea with him? Creatures with power less than can't block it. Okay, so I shouldn't be able to block the wolf. Correct. And is there a bad thing with me blocking him? Nope, okay good. Of course, now I'm really nearly dead, and there's nothing I have that can stop me, I think. I mean, this is my first combat. Maybe I did put the difficulty too high. A 1-1 one, one that does mm, interesting things. No, I'm just straight up dead because I'm at one life. You know what? I'll see you later, guys. We'll see if there's something else that'll be less murderous as playing the game for the first time. Because, uh, watch if you don't believe me. There's nothing I can do. He said 1-1, one, 2-2, one, two, two, and I'm at one life. So, let's do the silly thing. Which is, uh, I... Okay. Really, I'm not allowed to just straight up activate the ability. And I have to tell the game not to show me about summoning sickness all the time. <sighs> I was hoping I could use his ability to pay two life, but I suppose because I can't, I'm just dead. Thank you, aggressive red blue. Or red green. I could reselect colors, but how about I just see you next time?